Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I am TweetFPV. People call me Tweet, people call me Dan, whatever you want to call me, that works perfectly fine. Uh, glad you could make it. This is uh, my attempt at streaming consistently every weekend. This is stream number two, so not much to go off of. Uh, Josh Feltz, welcome. Uh, Angel FPV, welcome back. What's up? Uh, P. Richard Scott, welcome to the stream. Glad you could all be here. So a couple things we're going to do today is we're going to try to finish up this uh, Cine Explorer. Um, where we left off is kind of basically how you see it now. Need to configure this, need to configure uh, beta flight, put some props on it, put the ducks on it and get her going. Matt McL McLaughlin, welcome. Rana Shea, welcome as well. Um, some big news in the uh, FPV community this last week. Uh, Immersion RC announced, officially announced their ghost um, uh, and, and some more detail about their ghost system. So uh, if you haven't heard of the ghost system, it's a it's a long range, high performance, 2.4 gigahertz pro, uh, protocol, which um, kind of goes against the conventional wisdom of long range being lower frequency, like the 900 megahertz stuff like uh, Crossfire or R9. But they're uh, they're touting some pretty pretty impressive uh, impressive performance out of it, along with um, increased user uh, uh, user ease. You, uh, words words are tough again. Um, so that looks like a pretty interesting system. And the big thing um, the big thing I really am really interested about it is they also showed a rendering of a ghost module for the mini JR, JR Bay. Like what you would find in a lot of the newer FR Sky products, like the uh, X Light and the X9 Light. So at least they're trying to cater to a larger section of our hobby, unlike some other brands, which are like, this is what you get, buy it. Um, and they're offering basically to any manufacturer that wants to integrate their stuff into their their all-in-one boards or other third-party manufacturers, they're welcoming them in. They're not trying to lock everybody out. So that's a, that's a move we haven't really seen in the hobby in, in a, a, a while now. So it should be interesting. Um, I'm probably not going to get one right out of the gate. I'm going to wait and see what some other people say, let the bugs work out of it. Um, it's probably going to be a pretty good, pretty good system. Um, so... With that said, a uh, couple things to talk about. Um, if you want to uh, get my attention on the, the the chat screen, I'll show you what that looks like in uh, in my world here. It looks something like that. Um, if you type at and then tweet FPV, it'll light up in yellow, and I'll um, it'll be easier for me to see, or I'll, at least I'll try to catch it. You could also uh, do a super chat if it's available in your country or from wherever you're uh, viewing from. I'll definitely be able to see that. And let's uh, let's talk about uh, this guy here. So this on the bench here, let me switch cameras here. So this is a little something I whipped together last week just because I was kind of bored and I had some parts laying around. And uh, this is the, the, the sub counter clock. I know it's silly, but eh, it's a fun little project, little Arduino project. Um, some uh, dot matrix arrays. So there's my sub count. Uh, unfortunately, it only goes in 10 subscriber increments. So let's see if we can bump that up throughout the stream here. And uh, it'll also, hey, Angel FPV, I see you guys. Cell Ice, welcome, welcome to the stream. So that's another thing I got going on is um, I'm taking in a, another person's build, doing a custom build for somebody. I've never, I mean, I've done builds for people, but I've never, been like whole hog like here's a box of parts build it tune it make it good i've never really done that i've helped people finish builds i've helped people fix builds i've helped people tune builds but i've never done it from soup to nuts the whole thing and uh mr solace there he is uh sending me a project which uh will most likely be getting done on a live stream just like this so that's uh that's pretty cool uh, i'm really excited about that very very excited um, oh, and then uh, Instagram counter if uh, if you're on Instagram. A uh, couple things. Uh, I don't know if, I mean, I would assume probably everybody knows that I make 
uh, some of the best uh, FPV radio grips in the market for all sorts of radios. If you don't think you need them, you don't know. And you don't know until you try them. So I would highly recommend you give those a shot. Over there, you can check out my Etsy shop where I sell those. Uh, by the way, they are coming to one of the uh, one of the three major FPV retailers pretty soon. Wink, wink. Pretty, pretty darn excited about that. Uh, if you want to check me out on Instagram, there's another one of those linky things. And Facebook, let's just get all the links out of the way here. And um, another way you can support me and uh, this hobby and what I do here is over on Patreon. Uh, I do some stuff over there for, for my patrons. I do exclusive giveaways, um, kind of content on the side, early access to videos. And um, yeah, that's the Patreon stuff. I got tiers as low as $2. And if for some reason you just want to say thank you, uh, legal tender is always appreciated. Uh, yeah, building is half the fun. Um, Unless, unless you're not super confident in your building abilities and you don't want to smoke some components and you just need to get flying. Um, but I do, I, I agree. I almost like, um, I, uh, I almost enjoy building, um, building just as much as I like flying, except for the, uh, the building part is a lot faster, <laughs> at least for me. Uh, let's see. Uh, hey, is this the one that started three streams ago? I uh, started one stream ago. Uh, the the Cine, uh, the 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 Cine Explorer from uh, uh, FPV Cycle. Yep, that's what we're doing here. Um, and well, anyway, so let's go ahead and get started on this. So when we left off, uh, we got basically the entire thing built up. I got two of the ducts on there. Um, Smoke checked it, made sure it didn't smoke, more like. Um, and uh, I was going to update the um, the DJI Vista, but it was already updated. Crazy, right? Um, yeah, race fleets are kind of a pain in the butt. It's just like punching out parts, you know. Just um, I try to keep all my race quads pretty much the same. Very, very little differences between the two of them. Then there's always one that's just like my my parts quad that is like I've broke everything else and that's all I have left. Anyways, uh, let's move on to the Betaflight configuration. So this is uh, this is my process for setting up Betaflight and how I do it without hopefully wrecking anything. Or hurting anybody. All right, so we've got beta flight up. Oh yeah, uh, Robert Ortlup. That um, that flight was on uh, increasingly my my favorite quad I have right now. That is the, um, uh, that is the Beta FPV seventy five Lite running silverware, which uh, I don't know. I've, I've never flown silverware until that quad, and it is, man, it is something else. Like just the fact that you can't hook it up to your computer. It's just like, well, freedom. It is what it is. There's a little bit of PID tuning you can do, but you got to fly it for what it is. Um, it's like getting a crappy office chair. You just have to kind of get used to it. Uh, although that flies pretty darn good. All right, so let's. All right, so beta flight. Um, first thing I do is come in here and I check out this top left hand corner here. Uh, see what version of beta flight I'm running on this uh, flight controller. It's version 4.11. Well, there's newer stuff, so we're going to do that. And the other thing you want to check out is right here, where it says Matek F411. That is the target for this flight controller. Another way you can do that is you can come down to the CLI and you can type version. And also, uh, with this, most of the time, you just start typing the word and you hit tab, and it'll autofill. And again, we can see it's Matek F411 uh, version 1.1.1. And another piece that's useful is this, the actual build date. 
Um, it's just one of those things that is good to pay attention to. All right, so uh, I'll be bouncing back and forth between the chat window and what I'm doing on the desktop since I don't have a two monitor setup yet. Um, uh, Richard Scott, Etsy is not the most profitable way. Uh, the most profitable way is to just direct message me through Facebook, Instagram, or um, you can just uh, hit me up at Gmail. That is how I get the most bang for the buck. But, um, you know, if you just want the ease of going through Etsy, no hard feelings on my end. Uh, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Uh, can you, can't you change PIDs in OSD in the headset? Uh, Matt Mc, uh, McLaughlin, are you talking about the Beta 75 Lite? If you are, yes, you can. Uh, and that's about all you can change on that flight controller is the PIDs through the OSD. Okay, so back to beta flight here. Um, there's a couple different ways to get into the bootloader mode. You can hit this button here, activate bootloader, DFU. You can do it through the CLI by typing BL. Uh, we're just gonna hit that guy right there. And you see it, I've got, well, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see, desktop capture. All right, so you can see it's setting up a new device because I haven't hooked this up to the computer yet. We'll just give it a second and we should see um, DFU pop up here in the top right. There we go. Actually, we may need to plug and unplug once. And activate DFU. Oh, it's gonna make me a liar, liar, isn't it? All right, well, we'll keep moving on. We'll see what it does. So over here, um, you can do show unstable releases if you are if you know what you're doing and you wanna kind of play with some newer stuff. But uh, I come over here, find my Matek F411. And I'm just gonna pick the newest version of the firmware that's available and make sure you hit full chip erase, load firmware online. And flash firmware. It's not going to work, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay, so it's not going to work. All right, let's try this again. Load firmware online, flash firmware, and <sighs> so this is gonna be a pain in the butt, apparently. <laughs> Couldn't go easy with it. Yeah, sometimes these work really well, sometimes uh, not so much. Let's see how, uh, how other people have to deal with this. Let's try it through here. BL bootloader. And not so much. All right, so perhaps we need to get this. Oh, let's see the STM32 software. It's right off. Uh, it's right here on the Betaflight page right here. This link. 
Nope. Oh, that's right. They need you to register. Ugh. All right. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do this real quick. Just move you guys off my screen real quick here. Oh, the joys of Betaflight. And that Civil War firmware, uh, that, that Civil War board is looking more and more appealing. <laughs> uh, what am I working on, slow FPV? I'm working on a, uh, an FPV cycle Cine Explorer. And uh, we built it up on the last stream, and now we're doing all the, the fun, tedious software parts of it. And of course it's not flashing, so we'll go get some software here. A closing beta flight after forcing DFU mode, then reopen fixes it. Um, okay, let's uh, let's give that a try. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's switch to desktop. All right, let's uh, connect. Connect, activate DFU, let's close beta flight, bring beta flight back up. Nope. Not doing it. I haven't uh, I haven't flashed a flight controller on this computer yet, so this is a this is a fresh experience. Let's see. Hopefully this takes care of the issue. Let's try it again. Oh, I think I might have a crap USB cord here. So it's not, uh, doesn't seem to be playing well. That's working there. Hmm. Yeah, the joys of DFU. I think uh, I think I've heard that if you have a Mac, you don't have to deal with this crap. Yeah, drone pilot. I may have to figure out where the where the bind button is on this guy, or the sorry the the bootloader button or pads. Assume they got to be on there. All 
All right, well, that's not cooperating. So let's, oh yeah, the driver fixer, I forgot about that. My other computer has flashed so many, so many flight controllers that um, I have literally forgotten about having to do this. But good call, good call. Let's see how this goes. I think you may have gotten it. <laughs> Let's see. And we play the waiting game. So how's everybody doing tonight? How's things in your neck of the world? <clears throat> Driver's fixed. Chrome was open whilst fixing drivers. Yep, Impulse RC driver fixer for the win for sure. Australia. Uh, it's like winter time there, isn't it? <sighs> yeah, Robert. Um, COVID is not going away anytime soon where I'm at. Things are just getting, well, they're not getting worse. They're just progressively staying the same. But it seems like the people that I know lately that have gotten it are really, um, uh, it's just the real mild symptoms. All right, let's close Chrome. Like it's asking me to. No, I don't want to close Chrome. Ugh, it's going to make me close Chrome, isn't it? I found this new beta flight configurator. It's awfully slow to even just pick up a normal COM port for some reason. All right, I'm gonna have to close Chrome. It's not. Uh, it's not gonna be happy with me leaving the stuff open. Yeah, sometimes you do. Uh, the driver fixer will actually tell you that you need to close Chrome to uh, get to get the DFU mode to work. I have no idea why, but it has happened to me in the past. All right, I'll be right back. Oh, this is becoming just a pain in the butt. And now my cam link's not working. Oh, boy. 
Yeah. Um, technology's falling apart quick here. Okay. Should be back here. Chrome has been closed and reopened. Activate bootloader DFU. Come on, just work with me here. There it is. So see, we did have to close Chrome and run the driver fixer and all the other just stupid stuff. Okay, so back where we were about 30 minutes ago, uh, Maytech F411 and the target is, uh, sorry, the target's Maytech F411 and Betaflight version 4.2.2. Full chick brace. We're gonna load firmware online. That pulls it from the repo and we're gonna flash firmware. Man, did not think that was gonna be such a pain in the butt. But I kinda of knew it, it was going to be. I mean, why wouldn't it, right? <laughs> All right, let me catch up on the chat here. No, uh, Nemesis Betaflight doesn't use Chrome anymore. They they did away with that like uh, a while, quite a while ago. But for some reason, the Impulse RC driver fixer does have issues doing the DFU until you close all the Chrome tabs that are open. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It's it's weird. All right, so we got that going. Let's go back to. Bader flight. Go ahead and connect and apply custom defaults because why not? Problems with configuration accelerometers enabled, not calibrated. Yeah, okay. So it's sitting flat on my desk. I'll just go ahead and uh, calibrate the accelerometer. I do plan on maybe disabling that anyways. So step one, after I get Betaflight configured, also, if this is a pre-built, don't update Betaflight. Make sure it works first before you start screwing with Betaflight. Make sure it works. So anyways, um, first thing I do is check Betaflight and make sure that when I, um, when I move the quad, it moves in relationship to the little diagram on the screen there. And as we see, it's not quite right because this is a AIO whoop board. So it's about 45 degrees off. It's mounted like a traditional 20 by 20. You can see I'm tilting it back, but the back right motor's going down. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix that because if I forget about it, I'm gonna try arming it and I'm gonna let it eat my face. And I don't, I don't wanna do that. So yaw, we're gonna, add, we're gonna do, um, 45 degrees yaw. Uh, I would do this down here, but this only goes in 90 degree increments and we need to go 45. So I'm gonna add 45 degrees of yaw and come back to setup and give it another try. And I think we got it. So check all four directions and then make sure your uh, yaw about center is correct. And uh, I'm just gonna calibrate one more time just for shits and grins. All right, so we got that done. Uh, next thing is to come to ports. Now, um, if you go back to the old video, you'll remember that we hooked up our um, DJI uh, UART for the MSP protocol on UART1. So I'm gonna do that and DJI has gone from um, 57, or sorry, uh, 19, 19,200 baud rate to um, 115,200, uh, a couple firmware updates ago. So we're gonna use that. So this is how the air unit gets, um, gets all your telemetry data for uh, voltage and runtime and things like that. That's how it gets all that information because it doesn't use the OSD chip on the flight controller. So Betaflight doesn't have the ability to overlay data onto your FPV stream. So 
That's what the MSP protocol is. And I'm also planning on using a DJI remote and I hooked that wire up to a UART 2RX. So we'll do that and we'll hit save and reboot. And uh, one thing I really like about the new configurator is it takes you right back to the last page you were on. Uh, a couple of configurator versions ago, it would, uh, it would update or you hit save and reboot and it would go back to setup and sometimes it wouldn't save your last changes. So it's nice that it is, it brings you back to the last page. I like that. All right, down to configuration. So down to configuration and we are going to change this to, I'm gonna leave it at DSHOT 600. I am going to go uh, motor direction reversed. Reversing motor direction doesn't actually reverse your motors. It just tells Betaflight which direction your props turn. Actually making your props turn that direction is done by done in one of two ways, either through uh, the BL Heli software, either BL Heli 32 or BL Heli S suite, or you can just swap any two motor wires and that will accomplish the same thing. Uh, I don't have bi-directional D-shot on this yet. I do plan on doing it, but I'm not gonna do it now. We'll leave this digital idle at 5.5%. Motor stop, I always leave motor stop off because when I arm my quad, I want the props to turn. I don't want them to stay off until um, you give it throttle. A lot of cheap Chinese quads come with this turned on. So you'll arm it and nothing happens until you bump the stick and then boom, it comes alive. All right, 8K, 8K. Um, we'll leave the accelerometer on. This board doesn't have a barometer or a magnetometer. So no big deal there. This, we're gonna change this to 180 degrees, effectively eliminating the safety feature of not allowing it to arm. Um, you know, basically, so the whole point is if the quad's more than 25 degrees off kilter on any axis, it won't allow it to arm. Problem is you land on a slight mound or a roof, you're hooped. You can't, you can't do that unless you use some beta flight stick commands to recalibrate the accelerometer that that new angle is zero, but it's just, it's not worth it. But if you have accelerometer on, you always have that option there. So we're gonna leave that at 180. Craft name, we're gonna call this, uh, 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 can I spell? C-I-N-E-S-P-L-O-R-E. Cinefloor. Camera angle, I'm always leaving that at zero. Um, the Project Mockingbird stuff will put a FPV angle in there and that mixes your roll and yaw together. Um, for micros, that's kind of a cool thing to mess with, but for me, I'm just gonna leave that the way it is. RSSI, most receivers don't use analog RSSI anymore, so that's kind of a relic. Uh, the DJI stuff is SBUS, so this is set up just fine. Soft serial, we're not gonna use that. We don't need computer or CPU-based UARTs, and that just sucks up a lot of uh, CPU load, which, and Betaflight has gotten really efficient. Older F4, or uh, many versions ago, F4 boards with soft serial on, this thing be sucking 42% CPU usage, so they've gotten a lot better. Uh, we're gonna leave soft serial off, telemetry on, uh, air mode, OSD, and dynamic filter on. No GPS, and I'm not doing 3D. Uh, beacon tone, I don't plan on putting a beeper on there, so I put RX lost and RX set. That will use the coil windings in your motors uh, as a beeper. It basically turns them into a speaker. It's kind of cool. It's uh, really, really smart. And then the rest of the stuff I leave enabled except for USB. All right. So there is that. Power and battery. Um, if, if you're using a quad that you're gonna run um, high volt lipos, I always change this to 4.5. Uh, there is a scenario where you'll plug in a high volt lipo a uh, multi-cell one, and it'll think because of the high voltage in that pack, it'll think like, oh, this isn't a 2S pack, it's a 3S. Oh, and you're really low on voltage because it's averaging it out. Um, this will just help remove that from being a problem. Uh, and we'll save there. Yeah, so I, uh, I can't wait for this thing to fly too. These, just the, I don't know, Kebab's got a really convincing way of talking about his own products, which He's a great salesman, I'll give him that, but the videos I've seen on it, this thing is 
these motors are something special with these ducts and the props. This whole thing is all purpose built, not just somebody piecing together parts to make a cine type quad. So it's kind of cool. Fail safe. Uh, the only thing I do here is make sure it says auto, auto, and auto. Um, there are instances where I've seen people copy and paste CLI dumps, and for some reason, throttle will stay at, will get copied over and be at hold, which is horrible. Uh, and then the other thing is make sure it says drop. So nothing to change there. PID tuning, not worried about it right now. Uh, receiver, here is the fun stuff. Gotta get, gotta get a controller. All right. So DJI is interesting. Let's, uh, all right. If I turn this camera off and back on. Now that camera is not going to work today. So we're just going to go with this. So DJI is interesting because all the binding stuff is kind of built into the uh, into the radios. Or it's it's a little bit different than like what you'd expect with OpenTX. So we're gonna need a uh, batteria and something sharp and pokey. Um, probably shouldn't be using metal tweezers, but that's what we're gonna use today. Uh, no, actually we don't need that. I forgot this is the air unit. You got to poke stuff. This one's actually got a little button here on the side of the air unit. So. Go ahead and turn the radio on, typical DJI way, push and then push and hold. And to start the bind process, it is the power, or the record button, push down on this wheel here, and then push down on that all at the same time. And you should see, there we go. So that's in bind mode. Go ahead and plugificate this guy. We got a red light. Push the bind button. Light turns green. And there we go. I heard that weird little chirp chirp. That means it's bound. So, uh, Quad Mates SPV, uh, or Quad Mates FPV. Thanks for the grips. They work great. I'm glad you like them. They are, uh, they are something different. Oh, so these here, these are a, a rubber material that um, I purchased on request from somebody. He wanted rubberized grips. And they feel really good on nice flat surfaces like this, but they expand and contract a lot with temperature. And uh, they just... I don't know. I, I'm hesitant to put them on radios and list them um, on my Etsy store because I don't, I don't know the longevity of these things. They work great on this radio just because it's it's basically the radio built on the 90 degree angle, uh, but they feel great. And I've been doing them for my uh, TS100 SQ001 grips. Uh, they're kind of nice for that, but. Um, I don't know. I, I wasn't really impressed with it. And it's a pain in the butt to cut too with the laser. Uh, yeah, glue uh, glue, and the rubber expands and contracts for some reason. So it'll just kind of like, it'll just separate. It'll get all wavy. And then when it gets, when it gets cold, it like contracts. And when it gets hot, it gets, uh, it, it's not a great material, um, but it, it's good in an application like this. Okay, so that's bound back over to um, the beta of flights here. And you're gonna see we don't have stick movement because DJI uses something called S-Bus Fast, uh, S-Bus Baud Fast, which is coincidentally what the uh, Ghost protocol is gonna use. So they didn't invent a new protocol, they just, change the way they didn't so you've got your controller you have the stuff that goes over the air the receiver and then how the receiver talks to the flight controller they didn't change that because the s bus bod fast is is fine what they did change is um how it talks to the radio itself between the radio and the module and then how it talks from the module to the receiver so that's what's different and 
I don't know if I can get that in there. It would be great if I could. So inside of here, you've got all sorts of options. And then one of them here is, um, one of them here is where it says protocol and it is S bus baud fast. So what we have to do is we actually have to do that through the CLI because there's not an option really in the GUI yet. So we're going to, uh, let's see, set S bus. And then we can just hit tab. See, it's already, it's already auto filling this, which is awesome. And then hit tab again, equals on hit enter. And then you always have to hit save. Even if you're doing the binding commands in bait flight, you got to hit save. Otherwise nothing captures. And receiver, look at that. We got sticks. We got sticks and sticks. Now we just got to make sure they're doing the right thing. So throttle, yaw, pitch, and roll. Cool. And the DJI radio centers up really well, like surprisingly well. Um, and it, it automatically assigns your switches to aux channels, which you can change in the, um, in the goggles. You can tailor them however you want. So that is all set there. Our side channel, it doesn't matter because it's not going to, the, the air unit gets RSSI from, uh, the radio itself. And I got to get a little fan for that because it gets super toasty. This, uh, these beta flight or the, the DJI air units are like little mini nuclear reactors. They get so stinking hot. So, uh, it's always nice to have a little USB fan. Okay, so uh, RSSI, we don't need to mess with that. Stick low, I usually go 1025, uh, and that's basically the minimum amount your stick has to be down before it'll allow it to um, basically be below the safe threshold. So if your radio isn't set up well on the endpoints, I wouldn't really mess with it. Stick high threshold, uh, two grand, center's 15. RC dead band, I usually put uh, one and one, here, uh, leave all these alone, save. And then you can also verify that your quad is going to actually do what you want to do with the little, uh, the little picture quad here. All right, over to modes. Uh, all right, so the first one I always set up is arm and I always set my arm switch to the front left shoulder by pulling it towards me as arm. So as you can see, it automatically selected aux one because it had it on auto. If you have a really noisy aux switch, you may not be able to get away with auto because if you have other aux switches jumping around, it may pick that up. Uh, or if you have like a pot uh, mapped to an aux channel, things like that. But um, so this shows where my switch position is. So all the way forward is a thousand, middle is 15, all the way up to 2000. Move this bar so it covers where you want that thing here, so arm, to be active. So right there. Now it doesn't light up because we haven't hit save. We hit save, and now it's actually captured that change. So if we move this over to here, see it's not lighting up there because we didn't save it. So I'll put this back where I want it. And if for some reason, like uh, let's say you don't want this three position switch to be arm all the way up, you want it to just be anything off the bottom is arm, you take this here, and you just kind of extend it so that position middle and up are all arm and all the way off is this arm, which is typically the way I like to do it. Uh, angle mode. Eh, all right, let's just do some angles. Right, so angle mode will be centered up on this switch here, SC. Not even sure if you guys can see that. Nope, you can't. Let's move the quad out of the way. Da, 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 da. There we go. So this will be... Um, my angle mode and another save. 
Horizon, Horizon's garbage, you should never use it. Heads free, nope. Failsafe, nope. Nope. Beeper, add range. We're going to make my beeper be, let's say, all the way up. So that'll be beeper. OSD disable, you can't do that because we're using the DJI system. Telemetry, doesn't matter, black box. We have no black box chip on this board anyways. Angle mix, we're not doing that. Black box, camera control. Camera control is cool, that's for like um, the run cam. Cameras that have, actually have uh, UART control, those are kind of cool. Flip over after crash. Uh, we're gonna add this to flip over after crash. Uh, Pre-arm, I don't usually mess with um, lately. I used to on my Tyrannus, because I had it go off my hand. Uh, that's what she said. Uh, but I've been using the Tango too, so pre, uh, you know, pre-arm's almost unneeded there. Pit mode, paralyzed, acro trainer. Acro trainer's kind of cool. If, uh, if you've got a quad you want to set up for somebody to learn how to fly on, you can set the maximum angle and just put on a switch. You know, say, hey, here's arm, leave the switch there, leave it in angle mode, and you can set it to be like 15 degrees. Like that's as far over as it'll go. So that's a really cool little feature right there. And launch control, I'm not using because this is a cine quad. And you can compress this all down by hitting hide unused channels. And you can just verify that everything looks the way you want. So that would be arm, angle mode, beeper. You hear the motors beeping. Flip over after crash. That is that. Adjustments. Uh, this is really, this is a very, very powerful tool if you've never messed with it. Uh, when you get really advanced into Betaflight, you can make these, like, you can change your PID profile or your rates on a switch by using this stuff here. I'm not going to go into that. Same thing with servos. Betaflight's pretty weak in the servo game, but it does have options. Motors. This is the next big one. So, we need to make sure our motors are spinning the right direction. So, this is this is where people get tripped up a lot is motors and motor layout and motor direction. So, we've got a battery hooked up. Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. But you can't. There we go. All right. So we got the mo we got the quad hooked up. I got lipo pluggered in. Trying to keep that air unit cool because it will melt down on you. All right, so click this. Props are off. I understand props are off. Let's not mess with master. So we're gonna go over to, to motor one and we're just going to bring that up a little bit till the motor starts spinning. And we wanna make sure, A, the right motor is spinning. So this one is spinning and it correlates with this one here on the picture, this one here, so one, one, and this is the direction it should be spinning. So I usually take a little card or something, just kind of stick it in the spokes of the uh, motor and see which way it pushes it. So this one is going the right direction. Or sometimes you can just stick your finger on there and see which way the motor turns. So motor one is good to go. Motor two, we got the right motor turn or the correct motor turning. Looks like, yep, it's going the right way. So two is good to go. I've never had a quad have all four motors right off the hop, uh, except for the micro ones where you got the little plugger deals in them. Motor three, correct motor spinning, and we are going the wrong direction. So remember, we got to flip around motor three and motor four, correct motor, obviously, and that is going the wrong direction as well. So motor three and motor four are wrong. Okay, so we have two ways we can fix this. One way is to take any two motor wires and just swap them. Doesn't matter which ones, just any two on that motor, swap them and it'll reverse the poles. Or it'll, it'll reverse it and it'll spin the other direction. I don't really like doing it that way. The way I like to do it is through BL Heli. So what we gotta do now is we gotta disconnect from Betaflight. Uh, what would you say is a safe core CPU, guys? When I or when should I unplug at what Celsius? Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. The the warning element in Betaflight it goes off way too early, and I'm pretty sure all the flight controllers will actually shut themselves off before they cook themselves. But the warning element comes on way too early. Um, 
but that's just my own personal opinion there. All right, so let's go to my desktop capture. So what we got to do is we've got to shut down uh, beta flight. We got to actually disconnect and we got to close it. If you have that open, um, it's not going to work for you. So this is a BL Heli S ESC built into this. So there is a, a Chrome app configurator, which is really easy to use. If you don't have it, all you gotta do is go to um, apps and I think you just search for it and it'll be in there. But you gotta have a LiPo hooked up, make sure it says the right COM port, hit connect and read setup. There you go. There's our. This is a really basic ESC configuration program. They do make a suite like BL Heli 32 suite, which you can tweak every aspect of the ESC. So remember, we need to flip around motor three and four. So we're just going to go to reversed and reverse. Now, not bidirectional and not bidirectional reverse. These are for 3D mode. So we don't want to mess with those unless we're doing 3D, which we're not. Reverse, reverse, hit right setup. There it goes. So now these should be going the right way. And while we're here, we can flash new firmware. So hit flash all, select version. Um, and the only new one is a, an official beta. And I really don't wanna mess around with a beta. So disconnect. And again, we've gotta close this, otherwise uh, beta flight's not gonna work. The two get in trouble with each other with uh, COM port assignments. <clears throat> So we'll go ahead and disconnect and reconnect. Come back down here and we'll check these again. Motor three is now going the correct direction. And four. Oh, that's going the right way. So we're good to go. We can disconnect that. Take our little flan fan off of here. Okay, so that is most of my uh, most of my setup steps. <clears throat> uh, do I know? Do you know where I can get a used Hero Seven Black or an Insta Three Hundred and Sixty Go? Uh, a Hero Seven Black. Uh, Facebook Marketplace is a really good place to find stuff for some reason. It's become like the new the new Craigslist. Um, use Hero 7 Black. Uh, Angel FPV, are you in the US? I'm assuming you're probably not. Is, uh, in the US, we have Best Buy and we've got just the stupidest replacement program there. And buying used GoPros is, oh, it's almost not smart. Uh, and Insta360 Go, I haven't seen anybody selling those used. Um, maybe one or two. But not, not very common to see those for sale. Okay. Um, all right, moving on. So OSD. OSD is interesting with DJI because a lot, most of these don't work. Um, a few things do, like uh, average battery voltage. That works. And I'm going to put that on the side. Uh, warning elements don't work, but you can put this wherever you want. It's just not going to show up ever in your OSD. It really sucks. I really wish they would put that in there. Um, the other one I like to put is... Timer two. And I believe um, craft name works as well. Put that over there. And I'll put that down here. And eh, that's about it for uh, DJI. Uh, they, there's a lot of um, GPS things. Uh, the one thing they don't have is uh, like altitude for some reason. So we'll hit shave there. Uh, clearly video transmitter is completely useless because it doesn't work like that. Uh, sensors, this just kind of shows your accelerometer and, and gyro. Tethered logging, we're not using a tethered logger and we don't have a black box chip. So 
I just set that to no logging. And folks, I think we're pretty much set to fly this guy. So DJI does make this a little bit easier because you don't have to mess with uh, VTX tables or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, the one thing that's going to suck about this quad is for tuning, if you're going to actually use Betaflight to tune it, because the ducts very, very much get in the way of everything you're doing. Um, I think I've seen a couple 90 degree uh, USB ports. I will probably get one for this. Uh, you can't get BL Heli to connect. Um, which ESC do you have, uh, Celis? Is it a BL Heli S or is it a BL Heli 32 ESC? Because that makes a difference. The, the configurators are completely different between the two programs. Uh, so what do you guys think of the ghost system? Do you think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be all that? Oh, and what I really love is the day they announce it, of course, TBS then starts teasing a little graphical image. They don't say what it is, you know, in typical TBS fashion, but everybody's assuming it's a 2.4 gigahertz system. Um, coming from the company that said 2.4 gigahertz is ancient and it's garbage technology and it shouldn't be used anymore. Well, I guess, uh, you know, I guess they like money. Uh, some of the issues with Crossfire and, um, is in it comes a lot with racing when you have more than a couple pilots together unless you everybody's on 10 megahertz or uh 10 uh milliwatts and telemetry turned off um you can run into a lot of issues um, i've had a few times where i've had to sit there over my quad just waiting for it to connect and uh 2.4 gigahertz is a lot easier it's a lot easier to manage the antennas a lot easier to place them uh, yeah, it does look promising and I like that they're actually catering to everybody. So two different mindsets. So you've got the, um, you got the Apple mindset, whereas this is our device, you will have it and you will like it and you'll be like everybody else. And then there's the Android mindset where it's like, I don't know, you can all put this crap inside your box with a screen on it and, uh, we'll make it work for everybody. And that's kind of the approach, I mean, not exactly, you know, obviously that's exaggerated, but that's kind of the approach that uh, Immersion RC is taking with the Ghost system, and I kind of like that. So I just tried the configurator to no avail. One ESC, I'll check, but I've tried both suites and the configurator. It keeps telling me to plug in my battery. Maybe it's bad, man, like I told him. Uh, what, uh, what is this on? What, what are you working on? Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be open source. I'm pretty sure they're going to license it to people or different companies. And, you know, they're, you know, they're in the business to make money as everybody else is. They may charge a license usage fee, which, you know, BL Heli 32 does that now with all the manufacturers who make BL Heli 32 ESCs. There is a licensing fee that goes along with it. Um, it used to be forever that all the BL Heli S ESCs are... Um, they're free for any manufacturer to make. Uh, BK, yes, those are the FPV cycle motors. These are the, uh, what the heck are these things? These are the 2203 3450 KV motors. Just one of the mo most unique looking motors I have seen in a very long time. Um, this quad is very much a buy these parts and it will fly good setup. Oh yeah, how Immersion RC has Orca goggles and advertisement rather than fat sharks, uh, like usual. Yeah, well, that's because, um, stand by one second, I'll show you. All 
I gotta get my uh, bag of Orca parts here. That's because of the FPV Connect module. And if you can see right there, it might be a little hard to see. Um, you can see it's a, a very clear with a, a slight red tint. There's the Ghost logo. So one of the Ghost receivers will um, mount in to here. And I, I saw the interview that Bardwell had with him. And there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of possibilities with that. That uh, having the, the receiver there, uh, what they're going to be, who knows? But the orcas have enough technology and enough horsepower, and they can do just about anything. <clears throat> uh, the team mount version would probably have been a better idea, a better choice, except for I think the uh, selection of props isn't as uh, bountiful for the team mount. So let's go ahead and finish building this up. Oh, you, you pre-ordered the Ghost. Ah, uh, you know, I so want to pre-order the Ghost. I'm looking at a mountain of radios I got sitting here, and I'm like, yeah, I should get rid of some of them. I mean, I just, I've been doing some uh, receiver A-B testing. So to try to make it, uh, you know, usable results, I had to get another FR Sky radio. Oh, man. Stuff just, it never ends here. Talking about how long to get the power button. You know what? Uh, I had the HDO2s. I, I, I hated every minute of owning them. And I never once used the stupid power button. I just plugged them in, unplugged them. Oh, wait, no. I used the, uh, I was using the um, Immersion RC uh Power play. That's why I never use the, the power button on the damn things. HDO twos. I would have kept them if they didn't. If they wouldn't have changed the shell shape. Like the faceplate sucked. I, I did not like the way it fit for me. The orcas fit way better. Uh, the new long range quad based off of Dave C's, RC's design. You know what, Robert Ortlep? I like every single thing about his design. I've, I've cut a few of his designs before and I liked it so much that I actually bought one and it should be here in a couple days. Um, Dave C has some very awesome designs and I'm really happy that he's getting some like real backing behind him. Uh, yeah, 18 minutes on one pack. I'll be honest with you. I'll probably get really bored, but uh, that thing comes loaded with everything you need. Uh, it it's a great design, uh, designed by somebody who who deserves who deserves the recognition. But I should have one here in a a week or so. I hope. Uh, and if you are interested in one, I don't have a link, but Nurk and everybody else who got a pre-release one, they have an eight percent off coupon, which uh, takes it just below three hundred dollars. So. Yeah, and get on that if you're interested. Personally, I uh, I like to support Nurk if I have to choose somebody. I'm not sure why. I think he's the only. Racing's hard. Racing is hard to be uh, to make interesting and relevant. So, Agro is pretty easy. Uh, I'm not saying it's easy to fly, but it's easy to get a following with Agro. Racing is tough. So. Uh, I choose to support uh, old Boba Fett there. Plus, he does some really neat stuff. Uh, let's see. Where was I at with this? There's something I wanted to talk about. I can't remember. Eh. Well, the hamster fell off of that wheel. Okay. Anyways, uh, let's keep let's keep going with this guy. Uh, battery strap. Let's put this on backwards the first time, then flip it out. Flip it around. Do it the right way. Yeah, it's uh, $2.99 um, from uh, Flywoo Direct. Uh, I haven't seen him for sale anywhere else. Yeah, he has some pretty cool dogs, that's for sure. Um, uh, let's see. Go back and look at the chat. Hey, Craft King. Welcome. Glad you made it here. 
Yeah, Nurk. I, I've been following Nurk since he was uh, Boba Fett. That was his uh, his old his old uh, YouTube name. And get some props on this guy here. So I I don't know if anybody's been uh, into the Whoop game or in the Whoop scene, but I joined the um, International Game of Whoop. And uh, let's see, week two has come and gone. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been fun getting out and challenging myself to fly different acro environments and different different canned tricks. Um, I've been trying to get. So I I bought one of the um, the Mobula Six HDs. This little guy here. Um, and this is all that's left of it because it was absolutely horrible. Uh, this thing is pure garbage. Do not buy it. <laughs> I mean, flight times of maybe a minute, if that, if you're lucky. Um, but the, the flight controller, the camera, and the, the, the HD recording board that came with it are pretty good. So uh, I've been using that to kind of try to build up a different quad. Is I'd really like one that could haul around this um, the uh, Runcam Split 3 light, or the Runcam 3 Split light, and so I've transferred it over to a, let's move you out of the way here, I've transferred it into a 75mm frame with some, what were these, uh, 0802 22,000 mot uh, KV motors, um, and it flew pretty bad. Um, better, but still bad. Um, something that really made a huge difference is changing out the power connector to the, uh, the, the beta FPV PT, uh, BT 2.0. This made way more of a difference than I thought it was going to be. Um, Craft King, you joined iGow as well. Oh, uh, did they let you in uh, since you were late? I really hope they did. Um, anyways, changing this to the BT 2.0, this thing was starving for power, changing to the BT 2.0 and it flies way better like way better it's it's very very flyable now um the voltage sag was so low that the the vtx would start cutting out uh, it, it was bad it's a, it's a pretty hungry setup here uh but it still doesn't really have the craft yeah awesome I'm glad they let you in uh yeah bt 2.0 is it's the way of the future but i see that there's a new uh connector that is the GNB connector. I think that's what it's called. Let's uh, let's go do some uh, window shopping here. Let's go to the old banger goods. Let's see. You are sixty-five. I think has it. Urinals for women. No thanks. You are. 60, where is it, U-R-U-A-V, See, uh, the, they have a new 65 millimeter whoop. Ah, here it is. Oh, it's Ishin now. Uh, the US 65. So this is a 2S brushless whoop. It's a lot like the older uh, UR UAV um, UR 65, which was one of the first quads that Banggood sent me. That I really like that thing. That thing was really good for its time but this has a new connector on it so again we're fractioning the hobby off yet again with something new so see if we can find a picture of this connector here nope why would you so anyways that is a new style connector here which is supposed to be another kind of uh something comparable to the BT 2.0. So we'll see how that 
We'll see how that works out. What's the motors on the Mobile 6 HD? They are a good question. They are. Uh, they are the 0802 19,000 kV motors, but they are of just the lowest grade motors. No bearings, just oil light bushings. I mean, they're fine for what they do, but um, I don't know. So anyways, back to this guy. So I don't have, it doesn't have nearly the authority I want on it. So I'm trying, I bought a set of um, 1102 uh, 18,000 kV motors to run. Uh, and by the way, I'm running this on 1S to hopefully kind of bridge that gap because this little guy runs 1S on uh, 1102 18,000 kV motors. And this is the the best flying uh, 1S whoop I have ever flown. And again, this is the, the silverware quad that you, that you saw in the intro. Um, this, is, <laughs> this, is, this is literally my favorite quad, or my uh, favorite whoop that I've got right now. And I have beat the living dog snot out of these things. Like, Beta FEV's canopies used to be just like fragile as eggs. These things are just taking a major pounding and they're working just fine. The props are actually staying on this, which is more than I can say for the, um, the Beta 65X HD. This little guy, this guy flies really well, but it's 2S. This thing has way too much power. I had to put like a 75% throttle cut on it. Um, had a lot of jello. Had to kind of like try to soft mount the canopy there. Uh, but every time you hit something, you know, you'll be looking for three props because they just fall right off the motors. And these are 0802 14,000 kV motors. But again, this is running uh, 2S. So. I don't know. I haven't found something I like that I can haul a uh, split style board on yet. This is getting close. Hopefully the uh, the other motors. Uh, oh, the twenty five. Are you talking the twenty five thousand kV motors, uh, Jeremy? Like what came on the Mobula Six race? Uh, Want to sell the motors, Angel? Yep, I'll sell you the motors. Hit me up, tweetfpv at gmail.com. I'll sell you the motors. So, first thing I'm noticing with this is the, uh, the props are hitting just fine. Um, they'll probably just bed themselves in. Did I tighten all this down? Nope, I didn't. Oh, you know what? I was gonna do a giveaway today. I totally forgot. Thanks for reminding me. Um, so, hopefully there's enough people in here to make this worthwhile, um, both for you and me. Uh, I have this little guy. Uh, the cube frame is Awesome. I have beat the, you're talking about the pyro cube frame uh, because I have beat the living dog snot out of that guy. And uh, I, yeah, I've broken plenty of pieces on it, but um, it keeps going and it keeps going. Uh, and it's becoming, uh, I mean, it's definitely my favorite flying quad. Okay, so I'm gonna give one of these guys away. I don't know if you've seen this. Um, this is the uh, V-Fly short saver. This is, Kind of like everything you want in a smoke stopper, just without the uh, the crazy looking light bulb and the the hacked together kind of setup. Where is my smoke stopper? Oh, there's my smoke stopper here. Um, so this has been the traditional smoke stopper, just the automotive light bulb wired in a series with um, you know your lipo. Uh, there was these little guys on the market here, the RDQ smoke stoppers, which had kind of the current limiting resistor in them. These were kind of cool. They worked uh, okay. I don't know if I would trust it not to blow up a quad, but these were pretty cool. You know, you plug them in, you get a little green light, they short out and just clamps off the current like that. But so this was kind of like an evolutionary stuff. This is pretty cool. 
And this is the new one, which I really like the fact that it's got XT60, XT30, because as you see, I've had to make adapters and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you have adjustable current. So uh, uh, quads that have high current demand, things like large motors or split boards on them will typically trip these things as soon as everything boots up. This has the ability to uh, adjust the current by bridging some solder pads here. Uh, this also does do overcurrent protection, which or uh, reverse polarity protection, which uh, this little guy and this thing definitely do not do. Um, so you can adjust the output current on it. And the other thing is it's latching, so it stays it stays clamped off. Unlike uh, either one of these, when the short goes away, it just allows current to flow again. So this is definitely, I mean, it's big and it's kind of expensive, but this is this is this is a very good uh, very good thing to have. I just wish it wasn't as big. They, <laughs> I know I'm asking for a lot, but it'd been nice if they would have made this like a double sided board, fold it in half, have XT30 on this side, XT60 on, on this side, so it's like half this size, and then it would fit nicely inside my little uh, my little crash kit that I take to the field with me. But again, that's just me being picky. So. I'm going to give away this um, and a, uh, a set of my custom cut radio grips. Oh, let's see. How do we want to do this? Um, yeah, I think it's like two to five amps max, um, but it's adjustable. Let's go ahead and take a look in here. What's this thing say? Da, 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 da. Instructions. Uh, three mil three milliseconds clamping time, which is awesome. Um, let's see. Okay, oh, so here it is. So, uh, five milliseconds short circuit and fifteen milliseconds overcurrent, and seven milliseconds twenty milliseconds. I believe this is probably supposed to be milliamps and not milliseconds. Maybe. I don't know. But it's adjustable either way. So, kind of cool. Yeah, I think it's two, one or two amps. Um, one amp will be, will pretty much do everything, but a few quads that have the, the like the, the split style boards. It'd probably be uh, too much. And the fact that it's clamping then, and it'll lock itself out, which is kind of nice thing about this, is it'll, sorry, this, it'll allow it to still possibly boot up. But um, this guy's just definitely a safer way to do it. So, anyways, let's see. How do I want to do this? How do I want to give this away? Uh, how about we do, let's do a super chat giveaway. Um, Three bucks, three dollars, get your name on the wheel for this, a set of grips, and let's see what else I got. Yeah, let's do this in a set of grips, three dollars, and put your name on the wheel. Um, if you don't have uh, the ability to do super chats, um, PayPal will work as well. And let's see what time is it. It is 10.51, so how about um, 10.30? We'll make a drawing on that. And... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. If you're in the U.S., I'll cover shipping. Uh, Angel can't do super chat. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, da, 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 da. If you want. Here is the other way to do it. There you go. Uh, and if you do that, let me know that you did that. Uh, no, I mean, uh, yeah, sorry. You're right, Kevin, uh, 11.30. All right, so back to this guy. Uh, so this GoPro mount, I designed this by splicing together a bunch of other designs, but um, that's on the old Thingiverse. Grab a battery. You know what, let's test this guy out. Let's see how this thing works. So I haven't really messed with one yet.
All right, it's darts. He's uh, on the board. Gonna go for, gonna go for a twofer. Let's see how that works out for you. Uh, let's see. Oh. Wheel decide. Here we go. Let's let's make this wheel here. Uh, we got one guy on there. Let's see. Uh, All right, battery lifesaver thing. So we got one person on the board there. And, oh, I really need to get a second, second monitor here. Cool, I'm glad you like those. Uh, they've been a pretty popular thing. Uh, what was I gonna do? Oh yeah, let's give this guy a try. Go ahead and hook, uh, hook this guy up here. Let's go ahead and hook this guy up uh, here. Oh, there we go. See, it actually, <laughs> it actually clamped itself off. Uh, that that Cadex Vista unit that uh, that draws some serious current there. Uh, and the other thing is, they say to have the battery hooked to this before you hook it up to the quad. Um, not entirely sure why that is, but it has to do with something. Something about how uh, how the logic works on it, probably for the short circuit protection. Um, so we can flip this to a longer duration for overprotection. Kevin Dodson, three bucks, my man. All right, let's uh, let's get you on that there wheel here. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, I can't really call it a raffle though. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of like verbal trickery that goes into this kind of stuff. Uh, we're just calling it. Um, we're allowed to have a contest. It's a contest. All right. So, flip that switch to ten milliseconds. Up, oh, still overcurrent. Meh. So on this one, I would probably, since the, the Vista unit draws so much, Mo Chipper, we'll get you on the wheel there th three times. Uh, thanks for the content. I already have too many Cine Whoops, but it looks like I'm building another one. You know what? This is my second Cine Whoop, um, and I got a feeling my... Uh, my squirt will probably go on the chopping block sometime soon. All right, Mo Chippa, three times. One, two, three. I know you guys can't see that. And uh, BK to the fullest. You are on the wheel. Boom. All right. Uh, someone keep me honest with the clock there because, uh, I'll be honest, I'm not really paying too much attention. Uh, well deserved, bro. I thought, be, uh, thought to be honest, I didn't ever have won a single thing in my life. So, serious, a donation. Yeah, you know what? Um, you never know, man. You can always say you've never won anything until you do. And I don't know where I was going to go with that, but I thought I had something clever. Um, but, uh, yeah. Brain shut off. Okay, so this is going to work for my uh, my quad here. Um, tell you what, I got another one of these. So let's go ahead and let's make this modification here. We'll do it live. Okay, so fuse trips time customization. Uh, let's see, you can set longer trip time at the bottom layer for a larger build. So short the end pads. Let's go ahead and short them end pads. Fire up the old Heiko. All right, let's go ahead and 
It's a shame I had to cut this stupid heat shrink off of there. Retired Owen for five Canadian Copex. I'll assume that's about three bucks. If it's not, let me know. If it's more, let me know. Uh, all right, so we got we got some heat in the old slaughter and iron, and we're gonna short the end pads. A little bit of heat on the tip. Come on. Bridge, bastard. Looks like that might be bridged. Nope. Well, just barely. Now, the one time you want to bridge something. There we go. That's a good bridge. And remember, folks, don't clean your soldering iron. I had a brush. It's gone. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's see. Oh, Craft King, you won a Copus from Bardwell. Awesome, man. Like, I've been a, I've been a Bardwell fan from a long time ago. And, uh, yeah, I've never won anything from him, but... If I doubt, most likely could just turn around and give it to somebody else. Let's see. I think I got that bridged. Nope. Damn it. Come on. Not bridged. This is this is turning to be a complete shit show. This stream between my uh, my face camera dying, DFU nightmare, can't bridge something when I want to bridge it. Right, that's got to be bridged now. <sighs> Life. Nope. Not done yet. Let's, uh... I've always wanted to try the Hollybro Copus quads. They look like they are uh, a cut above the rest, like just the just in terms of quality. Um, except for, uh, I think it was was it the first Copus that had like the the I don't know they were like uh, it's like a composite uh, sandwich type material in them for the arms instead of carbon fiber. Uh, I mean, you know, it is what it is, but it's kind of weird. I don't know if I would, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Carbon fiber seems to have been like the, uh, go-to material for the longest time. Okay, that is definitely bridged this time. Kind of had to cheat and throw some material in there. I feel dirty doing that. All right, let's see if this works now. 
Ooh, light's green. There we go. So it will, oh, this guy died. All right, so. Make sure we get our radio turned on. Hey, thanks, Jeremy. I really appreciate that. Um, so uh, the, what was it? The, um, who was it? Uh, Stingy had a, his frame had like a layered setup, but it wasn't, it was different layers of, or it was layers of different types of carbon fiber, which is, carbon fiber is all layered layup anyways. But his was, uh, had like, like forge carbon fiber on each side just for or on each side just for cosmetics, which is kind of cool. All right, so this is one of the the advantages of these little smoke stopper things uh, is you should be able to arm it. Nope, that was it. So again, too much current. So this thing is like super effective. So that's a, so here's here's a, a nice usage of this is not taking your props off when you're in beta fight. You should take your props off. You should always take your props off. But let's face it, in reality, we don't always do it. But if you have one of these hooked up, then um, here's what happens if you try to arm your quad. It just kicks off. So if it does decide to flip out and try to take a finger off, um, you should be safe-ish. So. There we go. That was, uh, that's kind of what I wanted to get at. And that was a long way to get there, but we got there. Okay. Yeah, it looked like a piece of, it looked like um, an Oreo cookie, which is kind of cool. All right. So uh, one of the things I've noticed is the props do kind of touch some more than, more than others. But they'll uh, they'll definitely bed themselves in. Uh, let's see. Oh yes, that's right. I also need to bind my goggles to it. No, wait, I already did that. So the goggles are good. Quad's good. Uh, let's see what the alt weight on this is. I am curious. And that's with a uh, an 1100 milliamp. 4S HV pack. And we are at 410 grams. I'll add a GoPro to the mix here. See so how much that makes it weigh. Uh, Crafting, yeah, they do use uh, like a honeycomb composite layup in a lot of aviation industry. Uh, so with a GoPro all up, 536 grams. So she is not a light one, for sure. But as long as it gets the job done, it doesn't really matter, does it? Does it? Um, so the, the aircraft I work on, uh, it has a aluminum uh, fiberglass Honeycomb construction is most of the aircraft. Then there's also a Kevlar and um, and carbon fiber layups, but uh, it all depends on what the structure is, on what uh, what combination of materials they use. So let's see. What do you think? Think it's time for maiden. Yeah, it's a lot of weight for a three inch. It really is. Um, I think my, well, I don't know. Let's see how much this thing got. This thing weighs. So this is my, um, uh, squirt. So no lipo, no camera, 277. This guy here, no lipo, no camera. 274 so 
pretty close to the uh, the same weight, but much much different construction between the two. And this is, and uh, the the squirt is not a DJI setup. That's a, a an old analog setup. All right, let me clear some space here and figure out how the heck I'm going to. Let me see if I can get this camera to work again. I'm not sure why it's being a turd. Oh, troubleshooting here. Okay, hopefully I don't lose you guys here. I don't know why I can't get this stupid camera to work. Yeah, analog is going to be a long for a going to be around for a long time. Let's. Um, hmm. Bear with me here. So that works there. Yeah, I think it's OBS that just died with uh, with my camera for some reason. Uh, let's see. Thinking, thinking about how to get this on camera here. I don't want to close OBS because I don't want to lose everybody. Uh, let's see, it's parts. Do you have a 3D printer channel? I recently got into 3D printers and could swear there was a guy that sounds like you can't remember the channel. Uh, no, I don't have a 3D printer, but I definitely do a lot of 3D printing type stuff. Um, 3D printing and drones, for some reason, kind of go hand in hand. Uh, but man, that is a that is a long, dark road to go down. Shaky camera, shaky camera. And upside down camera. Let's transform to 180. There we go. That's a little better. All right, let's let's go ahead and do something stupid. Uh, so, Robert, what happens is uh, it comes on, but it's just it's stuck at whatever the last image was before OBS kind of crashed on it. Um, I'm kind of curious what would happen if I closed OBS and reopened it because I think it would work again, but I don't know if I really want to take that chance because I don't want to lose everybody. I have to make a new stream. Uh, I'm assuming I'd be able to pick back up on it. Fly inside? Yes, sir. No problem. Let's see, can you guys see that? All right, you hopefully can see it. 
Okay, so continuing on with my, how I set things up is first steps. Obviously everything's bound. What I like to do is just arm it real quick. All right, I got one motor who is stuck. Hmm, that ain't good. All right, <clears throat> I've got one motor that's kind of stuck because the props are touching the duct pretty hard. This guy here, where's the camera? There we go. Yeah, it's sticking pretty hard. All right. There. I don't want to burn up the ESC. Let's go ahead and try to bed that in a little bit. So, let's see if I can get to spin just a little bit. That should be better. Uh, maybe if I loosen the ducts up, I can kind of move it around a little bit. Sorry about the crotch shot there. tight. I don't know if the ESC is going to be happy with that. All right, let's go back up to the bench. Let's take a look at this guy. So you see it, it's rubbing pretty good right there. So let's try swapping props. See if that helps. I mean, I figure if it's close enough, it's going to bed itself in, but it's too tight right now where it's actually stalling the motor out. I prefer not to have any ESC fires. Went to the beach today for my daughter's birthday. Got freaking roasted. Analog mod for the DJI, there you go. This is the best solution out there. Look how low profile that is. This is the best option, in my opinion. Yes, you gotta tear the goggles apart, but nothing uh, nothing good comes out of not, uh, not having to struggle a little bit, but so low profile, fits in the bag. This is all um, injected nylon in a uh, SLS production style. So that fits a lot better. Props somewhat tight on this side, but a little better. All right, we'll see how that works. Yeah, they're spinning. They're kind of, you can kind of hear them rubbing maybe. So first thing I have to do is just make sure it arms. Go ahead and arm it and just slightly push forward. Just make sure the butt comes up on it. Make sure the back end comes up. There, they're a lot smoother now. Now roll right. There we go, roll left. And try to yaw a little bit. There. So the quad's actually re responding to the sticks the way it should. So after that, as long as you got video, should be uh, should be clear for flight. One, 
tilt that camera down just a hair. All right, there we go. And I hope it's still in frame. I am not a line of sight pilot, so this is as good as it's going to get. All right. Now, just check the motors for temp. Unplug it, of course. Um, now these are these are room temp. That's really good. You can see right there. Oh, you can really see how how it's really digging into there. Jeez. I'm gonna have to say that that's that's a. I think it's a defect in the design of the prop because this prop was tight on the other side too, but it's, the other prop's not tight on this duct. So I'm thinking this is this is a deal with the prop. I'll probably have to take it off and sand it down with some uh, emery board, something like that. But uh, yeah, there you go. So there's a there's an indoor maiden. Now, indoor maiden, is it safe? Probably not, but if you take all the steps that I took and I showed you today, there's no reason why um, it, why it wouldn't be safe. There's nothing that can really go wrong except for just catastrophic failure of some sort of component or whatnot. Um, barring that, it's about as safe as anything else we do in this hobby. Um, that bolt go. There we go. <clears throat> so there we go. There's the maiden. She's good to go. Uh, all right. So I got 10 more minutes. Uh, how do you decide? Oh, let me scroll back up here. Let's see, DJ system is like how it looks when the DJI goggles did. Um, is the DJI system like how it looks like the way the original DJI goggles did, where you can see pretty much everything? Uh, the DJI system is freaking incredible. If you haven't used one yet and you're not ready to buy one, don't use it because it is really hard to go back. Uh, granted, I fly both because you kind of have to right now, uh, especially if you race. Uh, DJ and racing, the, it, it works. But anytime if you try putting DJ pilots and analog pilots together, as soon as the analog guys have any issues, they instantly blame all of their video issues on the DJ pilots, whether it's because of their system or not. Uh, so there is a little bit of that going on. Um, DJ really needs to kind of sort out how to play well with analog quads as far as like in a race environment. And I think things would get better, but uh, the image quality and the, the ease of setup, especially if you use the remote too, is second to none. Uh, again, but it is more expensive, but it can do analog with the add-on module and the faceplate. No other goggle can do digital. So that's something. Let's see. So anybody want to get in on the giveaway? Uh, $3 for the, uh, the smoke stopper and a set of grips. Let me know. Uh, let's see. Missing furniture. No big deal. Nah, I move every couple years, so I don't own good furniture because uh, when you pay people, when people move you, uh, they do one of two things to all the nice stuff you have. They either break it or they steal it. So I don't really own anything that's nice.
Let's see, let's see. Use some old bowling alley props that laying around. Yeah, I probably should have done that. I've I've got a prop cutter and all that stuff for the the um, squirt, but these should have been a drop in thing. And you know, the closer the props get to the ducks, the better it the better it works. Honestly, um, yeah. And then with uh, with the new fifty megabit per second uh, transmission thing that DJI just released, oh my! It it took a really good, just the best FPV image, and just made it literally twice as good. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. There we go. That that should have cleared it there. That'll be good. Um, how do I decide camera angle? Uh, camera angle, I decide it based on how fast I want to go. All my racing quads, I have them all fixed at uh, 45 degrees with a fixed camera mount because when you start whacking gates, your camera angle changes. And then when your camera angle changes, Everything about how you fly changes. Your, your pitch roll, yaw, um, and your forward speed all change based on your camera angle. So these I set at 45 and you just learn to fly at 45. For this, on the other hand, seeing as it's gonna be cinematic, <clears throat> the, lower the, the lower the camera angle, the slower you're gonna fly. If you point your camera angle down, you'll end up actually naturally kind of wanting, kind of wanting to fly backwards. Uh, so just slow around the house, maybe 10 degrees, maybe almost flat. But if you're recording with a, a secondary camera like a GoPro, uh, you need to kind of think about where that's going to be. In general, um, it's better to look at more ground than sky. So you would want your FPV camera slightly higher than your, um, your HD camera. But then again, everybody's artistic style is different. So there you go. Uh, that analog mod scares the shit out of me, and I want to do it. What's to scare you? It's super easy. If you can build a quad, you can do that analog mod. There's nothing to it. Uh, this, all right, we're going off on a tangent here. This whole thing about voiding warranties, because you open the goggles up, does not void a warranty. If you get in there and you screw it up, it'll void a warranty. Um, well, I mean, I guess it could void a warranty, but a company like DJI is so big that if something happens to the goggles that you didn't do and you'd open them up before, when they typically what happens when you RMA stuff is they get it, they don't fix it. They just send new ones and then eventually down the road they refurb that stuff. So, uh, five minute warning. All right, thanks, Kevin. Uh, so, I, you shouldn't be worried about taking it apart. There's a ton of tutorials on how to do it. They're super easy to take apart. Um, there's very minimal soldering and modif modification you have to do to it. It is completely worth it. I have been flying my DJI goggles for two months straight. I have not flown my Orcas. I've been flying DJI because I want it to be like a put up or shut up. I, I went on a, uh, a two week vacation back home to Michigan. So I took just my DJI goggles. I brought analog and digital quads with me and that's what I flew. And you know what? They're great. There, there's no, um, ah, God, I, I have a hard time recommending anything other than the DJI goggles because of what they can do versus, you know, what, what other companies can do. The, the DJI goggles are just, they're, they're something else, man. They really are. Um, trying to find something her on the internets. Stand by. And another thing of why I don't have my DJI goggles is because of this. So these are my Orca goggles. Uh, I gutted them and sent them out and had them uh, Cerakoted. And that's my Tango 2 shell. 
This ain't no vinyl wrap. This is sprayed on, baked on finish. Uh, I can't wait to get these things back. They're in the mail right now, but I did a whole teardown video on the Orca goggles. I was told that uh, you can't do it because they're special tooling, which is all complete horse shit. And I mean, uh, these are just going to be just amazing. A little preview there for y'all. How does the camera angle setting and beta flight affect performance? Should we use it or not? Uh, typically, no. So the, the FPV camera angle mix, if you set it in beta flight, and let's say you measure your camera, it's 10 degrees, and you set it for 10 degrees, what it'll do is when you hit, when you add yaw and roll, it'll coordinate yaw and roll. Um, so the quad's going to do some, some magic trickery inside of there and make it want to move based on your camera angle. Uh, the Project Mockingbird setup for like the micro quads uses FEV camera angle mix. Um, and that works really well, but you're typically also flying in level mode. So it's kind of a mixed bag there. For the most part, I would say just leave it at zero. And even if you don't have it, even if you do put something on there in that box, if you don't enable FEV camera angle mix down in the modes tab, it's not going to do anything. Uh, Fat Shark is releasing Bite Frost. Yes, uh, they had Bite Frost earlier. Like I, I bought the first generation one with the big screen, and it was great. Uh, it's going to be great for racing. Um, Bite Fro if if DJI can do what Bite Frost is doing, uh, then they then Bite Frost would go away. Uh, DJI needs to have fixed latency and a way to um, output video, or at least have spectators view the video without having to buy the couple hundred dollar smart controller and another set of goggles. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, Robert, the first time you fly uh, the DJI system, you fly super slow and super non-aggressive because it's just so much to take in. I honestly shrink down my field of view and make it uh, four by three instead of 16 by nine because it is just too much for me, uh, at least at first. Now it, it's it's second nature. Um, what do you think about the Ishin 300 OLEDs? Uh, yeah, two big thumbs up on those. I am trying to get a hold of a set of those. I really hope I do get those. Um, I really like the Skyzone 03 or 03 O's. Uh, those I thought were better than the HDOs at the time, and I flew those exclusively until the Orcas and the DJIs and the and the um, HDO twos came out. But uh, they do look really good. All right, Jeremy, you say giveaway time. Anybody? It's going. Three, two, one. Yeah, Robert, you're watching everything but where you're going. All right, so let's change to, what am I doing here? Desktop capture, all right. And wheel to side. So I have It Starts, Kevin Dodson, a bunch of chop, mer, cho, FBV, BK to the fullest, and retired Owen. Uh, I really hope I got everybody. If you didn't, let me just double check, make sure that nothing else came in on the side. All right, there we go. That's everybody, unless somebody says something else. Uh, how do you get in $3 Super Chat? Should we give Andrew a second? Yay, nay? Yeah, why not, right? We'll give you a couple more seconds here. So then again, this is for the, the V-Fly uh, smoke stopper thingy and a set of grips. Um, I'll cover shipping in the States outside of the U.S., that's on you. And all right, Andrew, uh, if you want in, not your chance. All right. Well, let's. Uh, so, uh, anyways, uh, this Grant uh, Lash Lashley. Um, Bardwell uh, on his Patreon put out there that this is the same guy that coded Bardwell's goggles and um, 
He said he was looking for more FPV related work, trying to branch out to other than just, he, he works at a gun shop, obviously. That's where Cerakote is kind of born and bred. And he was reaching out wanting more uh, FPV related stuff. So I hit him up right away, told him I got the Orcas and I got the, the, the Tango 2 clear shells. And it's got to be the clear shells. It's a different material than the black shells. The black shells will melt in the oven. Because this, again, this is all baked on. So this is the transparent shell, and obviously he painted the outside of it, but it's a different material. Um, so I was taking a bit of a risk to do the goggles because they could have turned into a pile of goo, but luckily no such problems. Um, but yeah, so this is the guy that Bardwell used to powder coat all, or sorry, uh, Cerakote all his stuff. Alrighty, wheel to side time. Uh, let's see, da, 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 advanced color scheme. Let's do the, the old pastel. I think that looks about the best. Um, learn to spell, damn it. R A N D. All right. Random number generator. Between one and, let's say, eh, let's go 100 today. Generate, and it, oh, geez, 95. This is going to be a long one. I've got to figure out something to say in, in the meantime. Second spin, 95. I think that's what I said, right? 95? 95. All right, guys. Apply changes to the wheel. Battery life saver thing. All right, guys. Good luck. Thank you for everybody who entered. And here we go. All right. Yeah, uh, Cerakote is really good stuff. I've done a lot of dirt coating uh, on my on my particular stuff. Like I, I refurbish a lot of old FR Sky radios that are just beat to hell, and I do Cer uh, dirt coat. And it's a really good thing if you're going to do. It's a DIY thing. It doesn't require baking, and it's pretty damn durable for what we do. All right, slowing down here. Who's it going to be? Suspense is killing me. Sheer numbers, man. There it is. Chomper FPV. I'm going to have to say you're going to get it. There you go. Come on, do the thing. Make it, make it official. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. So you won the package. Go ahead and uh, if you could, just email me at uh, tweetfpv at gmail. Dot com. There you go. Uh, email me there and we can talk about some details. And you know what? That's pretty much going to wrap this up. Unless, uh, unless you guys got any other questions about things going on. You got any uh, uh, troubleshooting questions? Go ahead and hit me up. I, uh, I really like trying to help people out with this stuff. This is not an easy hobby to get into. Has a lot of pitfalls, and uh, the last thing I like to see is people um, getting out of it because of, well, the difficulty that is that is FPV. It's this is one of those things I tell you it um, it makes my life better. I uh, I feel feel fortunate to be able to do this because it is kind of a um, I don't know. It's an expensive hobby to get into. And uh, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of moving pieces. It's not easy, uh, but flying is one of those things that is probably the most relaxing and calming thing that I do uh, when, when I want it to be. There's other times where eh, it can make you pretty pissed off, but <laughs> that's, uh, that's a whole other story there. All right, guys. Well, 
that's about it for tonight. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, I really appreciate everyone. Uh, can I run, can running the Vista down to seven volts damage the unit? Um, it's not going to damage the unit. Running low voltage, it, it won't run. It won't damage the unit. It'll either just shut itself off, or uh, yeah, that's it. It'll it'll just shut itself off. Um, running too high a voltage, on the other hand, will ruin it. But the Cadex Vista will run straight up to six S direct input, not like the air unit, which was four S only. But uh, yeah, uh, the Vista is a, it's a better thing um, unless you really need that onboard recording. Um, I like the Vista. All right, well that's going to do it for me. Um, definitely look forward to seeing some videos of this guy flying around. Um, keep an eye out for the International Game of Whoop Season Two videos coming out. Uh, I've got another. I've got a lot of other really cool stuff. I've got more stuff than I know what to do with. Um, I've got. I've got these little guys. These will be coming to a giveaway soon. And uh, ah, man, I'm, I'm drowning in parts and stuff that I got to get rid of. And the easiest way to do it is to, uh, <laughs> well, to give it away. All right, folks. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking us out. And I really appreciate everybody who supports me. Um, you're, you people are what makes this hobby as good as it is. All right. I will see you all next time. How do I end this damn thing? Oh, oh here we go. Bye.